With Way of the Samurai being a surprise sleeper hit, a sequel was in the works not long after the original game made the rounds. The cat was out of the bag when Aquire opened the site for the game in June 2003. The site had a promo video and details about what Aquire had up their sleeves for this one. They also wanted to make the fighting better by tweaking the tactics and including more weapons. More details were revealed later that month about the game's setting, improvements, and new additions. By that point, the game was about 60% complete and scheduled for a 2003 October release in Japan. Meanwhile, BAM Entertainment, the publisher for the first one, was dealing with financial issues and were unable to publish the sequel, and Eidos was MIA dealing with other stuff around this time. Fortunately, Aquire had a savior in bringing the game into North American and PAL territories. Capcom. At that year's Tokyo Game Show, Capcom announced Way of the Samurai 2 as a part of their lineup, including many other games of theirs with playable demos. By February 2004, Capcom announced that they were bringing the game outside of Japan for a summer 2004 release. With the Japan release already in the can, other kinks were ironed out, and the game had its international release on time. Way of the Samurai 2, Samurai Do 2 in Japan, was developed by Aquire and published by Spike in Japan, while Capcom handled publishing responsibilities in non-Japanese territories. The game was released in Japan on October 9, 2003, July 6, 2004 for North America, and one day later for PAL territories. A PSP version was released in Japan only on September 3, 2009. Like the previous game, Way of the Samurai 2 puts you in the position of a lone ronin looking for work and takes you on a choose-your-own-adventure style action game. While this game takes a slightly different approach to the plot, it still keeps a lot of what made the first game so good and irons out some of the more clunkier kinks seen in the original. Like the first game, you'll start off with the character creation mode to modify your character. You can edit the name, head, clothes, sword, and items. Apparently you can have a female samurai, but you'll probably have to unlock that option amongst many other options. After you set up, you are dropped into the world. The game is actually a prequel despite having a 2 in the title, a la Red Dead Redemption 2. It takes place during the late Edo period. This lasted from 1603 to 1868, and that last year was 10 years before the events of the original game, so take your pick as to what year specifically, or time and yeah. Your character arrives in the town of Amahara, but much like the main characters of Samurai Champloo, you are desperate for food, so much so that you collapse upon entering the town. Once you awake, a young girl offers you a rice ball. You take it, and you're re-energized. But it's not long before a gang of troublemakers show up and scare the poor girl. These guys are from the Otto gang. One fight later, we scare them off. We then meet someone who I assume is the young girl's mother. She finally finds her after worrying and wondering what she's been up to. We learn she's a servant in the Amakaze Inn, and she wants to take us there. The lady runs off to run errands for Dr. Genin, but she does introduce herself as Chio. The young girl has no name, more like we don't know what it is yet. She's just known as No Name from Amakaze. From there, you can go to the inn or go anywhere else from the map screen. Yeah, this game doesn't have much of an overarching plot unlike the first one. Well, there is one, but it's kind of the same as the first, and you might not notice it too much if you get lost in everything else, which you might. You get introduced to the area and then you're off to do whatever. Plus, you can already see one of the changes, the aforementioned map screen. Unlike the previous game in which areas were all linked together and had to be traveled on foot, this game has much bigger areas to travel. There are 10 areas here, Edge of Town, Amahara Shrine, Numada Cho, Auto Gang HQ, Shikano Cho, Amakaze Cho, Kakinuma Cho, Magistrate Office, Otsuka Cho, Otemon Gate, and outside Amahara. That last one though is more or less a way for you to exit the game. Beyond that, and the overall nature of it, the game itself is pretty much similar to the first. You'll go around and interact with various NPCs, and you can choose your dialogue options, which can affect the story. Depending on the choices and what you do, you'll probably find yourself fighting enemies quite a bit. The combat pretty much remains the same, where each enemy attacks you one at a time, and you'll use your sword. There are some different non sword weapons that other enemies use from time to time. I didn't realize it until I replayed the first game, but the combat does have an aura of a little jank to it, but since this isn't a full-on Onimusha-like game, it's not much of a surprise, it just has a very different curve to it. That's all. 
On top of that, you now have stance breaker attacks on just about every weapon useful for staggering enemies, the parrying and guarding has been made easier, and you now have instant kills via fatal slash. Moving around and picking up items and the like return from the last game, though you can now hold and buy them with the money you earn via in-game work. Dojima, the Swordmaster, also returns from the last game, but he's not directly involved in the main plot. He can enhance your swords. Durability is the only attribute to return from the original game, and it works the same. Two of them have had their names replaced, and one is just gone entirely. Sharpness is replaced by attack, flexibility is replaced by defense, and health has been replaced by a new attribute. Quality, which is the number of upgrades left that can be done on one sword. You can also now appraise them to make them better. This improves their stats, but you must fulfill conditions, like getting a certain number of kills. Some can be appraised based on name alone. Aside from all these changes, returning players will pick up on it all just fine, and new players can adapt pretty easily. It sounds complex, but it's really easy to grasp, and the open-ended nature has really opened the game up to let you play how you want to even more. You have 10 days, each broken up into 5 periods, or it may end earlier depending on the choices you make. The good controls from the first game are back. The combat is handled similarly to the first, with the same easy to pick up, but difficult to master style like the first. In addition to horizontal and vertical slashes, blocking, guarding, and the like, you have the parry ability. Press the block button and push the left analog stick in the right direction based off the direction of the enemy's swing. If you pull it off fast enough, you can do some serious damage. I also mentioned the stance slash guard breaker, but it's more difficult to perform and you become more vulnerable, so maybe don't use it too often. Navigating menus works fine as well, but be prepared for quite a bit of dialogue, though that has also been modified, more on that later. Still, it's very easy to pick back up for returning players, and newer ones will adapt fine, even with the new mechanics, notwithstanding you not playing the first game. The graphics here actually have gone a bit of an improvement. I'm guessing the emulation really did wonders on the first game, because it actually looked a bit better than I remember. Mostly in the character models. They are pleasant to look at, the facial animations look nice, as do move animations in general, and the outfits look nice and have a bit more color to them, with the only grayish stuff being the gravel you walk on. Actually, there is more color in this game than in the original. Banners on buildings, the buildings themselves, outfits, other objects, everything just looks a bit nicer. The building designs also look nice and fit the time period well enough. There are also more of them to accommodate the bigger areas of the game, and they do look better than the buildings seen in the previous game. Though some of the textures on buildings, banners, and things like that don't quite look sharp, but it's aesthetically pleasing. There's also more variety in the environments you visit, and the game just looks much better than its predecessor. But it only runs at 30 frames per second due to all the new improvements. But at least it's consistent, and the game still runs well with little to no slowdown. The game's sound is also pretty good. The same composer for the first game, Noriyuki Asakura, returns to compose the music here. There are 26 short songs, and most of them follow in the same vein as its predecessor. I forgot to mention this before in the previous review, but Asakura's style is very unique. He mixes traditional Japanese music, but he fuses it with folk and rock music. He fuses it in a way that sounds both pleasant to the ears and flows well. In any case, the music is really good here, and each song fits each scenario it plays in. It's also relaxing to listen to by itself. The sound effects are also pretty good. There have been some minor improvements here, but it's not changed too much from the original game. It wasn't broken, so just slightly enhanced it, but there we go. Everything sounds like it should, from steps to attacks, menu sounds, etc. Believe it or not, this game actually has more voice acting than in the original, like actual full-on conversations. Your character doesn't speak, but just about everyone else around you will speak. You'll still have dialogue boxes, but they will now be spoken. It sounds fine if you don't mind that cheesy charm in English dub being made in Japan has. There's just something to it I can't quite explain. In any case, with 10 endings, 4 more than the last game, and plenty of other items to unlock for customization stuff, there's quite a bit of replayability to keep you coming back, maybe even more than the last game. Way of the Samurai 2 expends on the premise of the first game and gives its own flavor to revel in while keeping what made the first game so good. It looks better, plays better, sounds well, has actual voice acting in it to boot, controls well, has much bigger areas with more variety in them, and has plenty to keep you coming back, even more than the first game. However, not having your character speaking kind of sucks. 
I'm not a huge fan of the 30 FPS lock, and the game is very similar, but maybe a bit too similar to the first. But the formula worked for the first time, so sometimes you don't need to, well, change the formula, and the game still succeeds on its ambitions. I will give the same advice I gave for the first game. If you want a more action-oriented hack and slash, don't bother with this game as it's not really that. But if you want an action role-playing samurai experience, this game very much succeeds in that. However, it's a bit more expensive in the original, at least in the States. Japan complete unbox copies are about 10 bucks, and PAL complete unbox copies are about $15. For all you guys in those territories, go for it. You won't be disappointed. As for my fellow North American collectors, the game retails at about $40 for a CIB copy. That's how much it cost when it first came out, and it has gone for higher prices at some points, but still a bit much. If you like the first game, pick it up. If you want to play in chronological order, pick it up, but maybe get a good deal on it. Either way, you're in for an interesting experience. I give Way of the Samurai 2 a 4 out of 5. Thanks for watching. If you like what you saw, click the big red button below to subscribe. Check out the other links in the description for more cool stuff. And check out the playlist on screen for more content. See you in the next video.